Hey everyone, it's Monica. Welcome back to Homeschool Voices. Today, I'm going to tell you how to jumpstart your homeschool journey. So today's video is dedicated to a friend of mine. You know who you are. Um, she called me with some questions about homeschooling because she is going to have to homeschool next year. She was never really planning on doing this. She's coming out of the public school system and she's kind of overwhelmed by all the choices, maybe a little unsure about her ability to educate her her kid and she just wants to make sure that she's covering all her bases and doing a good job. Um, so I think if you watch my videos, you're gonna see that I advocate a um, piece it together, a very personalized educational plan for your kids. Um, but I think that if you're coming out of the public school system, I can understand that being a very daunting prospect. Um, and I can see you being very unsure of your, your ability to piece together an educational plan for your kid. Um, I still suggest that you look at some of my videos where I talk about this because it's a good idea. But for this year, I have some very solid recommendations for you that you can just pick one of these, you can just do what the curriculum says, and you're going to have a good year. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is charter schools. California has homeschool charter schools. And these are a really great option. So if you live in another state, I think there might be a couple of other states that do this. Um, if you don't live in one of those states, you might want to skip forward a couple of minutes because there's a lot of good information in the rest of the video. But for those of you who live in California and you are coming out of the public schools, I suggest you consider a charter school. I don't know the charter schools are going to last forever. I don't think that matters. And I'm going to tell you why. The main reason that people choose charter schools is the money, guys. The money. You get, uh, I looked into two charter schools. I looked into Gorman, which is local to Santa Clarita, and I looked into iLead, um, which I think is all over California, certainly in the Santa Clarita area. Um, they offer a lot of money. Gorman offers $2,500 a year, and iLead offers $2,800 a year. Gorman has this resource center um, where they have classes um, during the day all day for one, well you would do it one day a week if it was elementary and two days a week if it was, um, if your child is in middle school. So they're there for quite a bit of time and I thought it would be good for socializing but then I went there and realized that most of the classes are just the core classes, math, science, social studies, language arts and I'm really happy with what I do in those areas at home so I didn't like that. I really liked the art, the art room that was really cool and I liked the idea of my kids being able to do art. The teacher was great and they would be able to talk and socialize. That is what I was really looking for. Um, so ultimately I didn't love Gorman because most of what the kids would do, they wouldn't be able to socialize and the handful of other elective classes where they might be able to socialize, my kids wouldn't be interested in. So Gorman didn't work for us. We're actually going to try iLead and again remember, I am doing this video because I was trying to answer my friend's questions and then I just happened to get a lot of great information for myself. Um, I don't believe that charters are going to stick around forever. I don't know. I might be wrong. I might be pessimistic, but um, I'm not sure that they're going to last, but that doesn't, that doesn't matter. Um, there's a lot of attacks. If you, if you pay attention to the news, there's a lot of attacks. Um, because people are sick of the public schools and they're pulling their kids out and they're going to these charters and that diverts funds and certain people don't like that too much. But you might as well take advantage of the freedom and the flexibility and the funds while you can. Another thing that I find to be a little bit of a nuisance but a lot of people love is that when you sign up with a charter you are going to have to meet with um, an education facilitator, an EF, I think I'm saying that right every four weeks. So their job is to make sure you're staying on track. So you might find that really comforting. For me, I just feel like somebody is giving me their opinion and I don't really want to, <laughs> I don't really want to hear their opinion. <laughs> but I don't know, I'm going to be optimistic and I'm going to give it a shot and give that person a chance. I'm sure they're lovely people. So really, I mean, I'm, I'm going to give it a shot. Um, and you're going to have to provide one work sample per, per core area. So one for math, one for social studies one for science, one for language arts. Um, depending on the school, it might be three for each area. Your funds, when you use your funds, um, if you are purchasing something like a computer or a textbook or a violin, 
those things have to be returned to the school just like if you were in a typical public school you would you couldn't keep the things that are on loan to you same thing here um, so it, with those funds what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those funds for lessons um, for ice skating um, I'll tell you some other things not that I'm going to do these things but there's horseback riding there's rock climbing there's taekwondo and there's um, there's academic things there are academic things too there's math tutors there's writing writing coaches there's some foreign language things like that so that's what I would use the funds for that's kind of what we're gonna do that's our plan um, but if you buy something like a workbook that is meant to be written in they're not gonna ask for that back just like in a school just just so you know most of these charters my understanding is that they have this room where all of those supplies go and you can go there and see if there's anything that you want and that stuff you wouldn't be charged for because it's already been paid for with funds so you can look for um, equipment uh, of various sorts, maybe musical equipment, uh, <clears throat> curriculums, textbooks, books, things like that. I'm trying to think, is there anything else about charters? Oh, the most important thing, for those of you in California who are coming to homeschooling through, uh, because of SB 276, um, and the, for those of you who don't know, SB 276 makes it nearly impossible for a kid to get a medical exemption for vaccines and the law says that the children who uh, need it can get it but it is so so restricted that in reality it's not really like that so a lot of parents are just saying you know what I'll just homeschool like it so for those of you and you're probably worried about the charter schools because they are public schools um, but don't worry I have verified this multiple times from the actual charter schools because they are not classroom based, you do not have to provide an up to date record, but you do have to provide a record. So just know that you are in their system. You do have to upload a record, even if it's completely empty. So there's that, but you still can take advantage of, of the funds and of the guidance be, be, because you might meet with that. If you sign up with a charter, you'll meet with that person once a month and their guidance will be there with you want it or not. So one thing I want to talk about today is boxed curriculums, complete curriculum sets that include all of the core subjects. If you watch my channel, you're going to see that I don't normally advocate that. Uh, for me, it is too much money to spend. They tend to be a little pricey around $700, $750, but you could use charter funds for that if you wanted. I think that they will normally do also monthly payment plans. So that is a nice option, so it's not that bad. But the reason that I'm going to suggest them is I think if you are coming out of a school system, um, again, you might be just very unsure of yourself and if you're doing the right thing. And I think you'll feel really good if you're using a curriculum. So that said, I'm going to suggest two very solid literature-based curriculums. If you don't like to read, I don't know. <laughs> you don't have to, your kid's reading. Um, I think that a lot of us didn't grow up reading as much as we should, myself included, so I am part of this. Um, I just want to say that I think that we need to get past that and we need to have our kids read. It is very important. You're not going to be educated in the same way if you're not reading. So I'm only going to suggest things to you that I would feel comfortable purchasing for my own kids and I even toyed around with purchasing one of these uh, curriculums with my kids until I said, no, I can probably piece it together myself. Um, but for those of you who don't feel comfortable doing that, I'm going to for first suggest Bookshark. Now again, I don't have personal experience with these, but I have asked multiple people, a, a lot of people about them, and I've researched them a lot over the last month. So Bookshark is a solid curriculum. It has everything you need. It has a, a 36 week, four day a week, um, schedule laid out for you so it kind of lays it out in each different um, each different uh, book so for the math book there's a schedule for the literature arts there's a schedule so it kind of does do it like that but it lays it out for you so you know what you have to do every day and then that fifth day you can do field trips or you can catch up with the work you didn't finish or run some errands whatever you want but it's a great program another cool thing about Bookshark is that you can customize 
based on your child's reading and math level, which I thought was really good. If your kid's a little slow with their reading, you just customize it and you're gonna get easier books. And then if your kid is advanced, also you're gonna customize the same with the math. Very, very cool. Um, what else is great about Bookshark? It just has everything you need and it lays it out and it's solid. I mean, really, you don't need to go any further. You can just go and get Bookshark and then over the next year, what you can do, and I, I think you should do, is start learning more and more and more. And then if Bookshark wasn't perfect, I mean, how could it be perfect? You're a unique individual, your child's a unique individual. So maybe you will do some different things, but it's a solid, good place to start and your kid will not get behind and, and your kid will learn. So the other one that I wanted to suggest to you is moving beyond the page. So this is similar, it's literature based, very similar. It has a lot of books every year, very good selection of books. It also seems to come with a lot of uh, workbooks that come with each book where you would answer questions. I don't know if you felt the need to go through all of those workbooks, you could. To me, that might just kill the joy of reading if you did every workbook, but they might be valuable. Um, so they have that. Um, the neat thing that Moving Beyond the Page seems to celebrate on their website is they talk a lot about um, integrating the books. So they use the books to integrate what they're learning in social studies and what they're learning in history, basically. So they pick the books in that way. So they are age appropriate and they're also bringing in everything else that the kids are learning in the different subject areas. So I really like that. Another thing I like about Moving Beyond the Page is when you go to the website, there are a lot of videos that help you to pick which level is right for you. Moving Beyond the Page doesn't do it as grade two, grade three, grade four, grade five. If you're coming from the public schools, you're gonna be really used to that sort of thinking. But when you think about it, go to any public school, any fifth grade class, you're gonna have kids that maybe could do sixth grade work and you're gonna have kids that probably should be doing third grade work. So moving beyond the page has an age range for you. And then for that age range, for the different courses, you go online and they have videos and they really help you pick the right video. And since they are so conscientious, I bet you if you were to email or call them, they would one up themselves you know, from their videos and they would even give you more information and help you pick just the right thing. So I really liked, I really liked that about them. I thought that was pretty cool. The one downside is that they don't have math built in. I don't know if it's a downside, but it might be a downside to you if you want everything laid out for you. So the math is all the way through nine year old. They have that integrated in their curriculum. So for the older ages, they offer a life of Fred. Life of Fred is something that you might want to look into. It is sort of like a storybook based approach to math. People love it. Google it, see the reviews. Um, and I think in the next couple of years, moving beyond the page for the next two age groups up, I believe they're going to be rolling out curriculums that also have math wrapped into those curriculums. So be on the lookout for that. Check that out. Um, so other math suggestions. Okay, so if you wanted to do moving beyond the page, I love Right Start Math. That's what we do. We do Right Start Math, and I also purchase a, work, a workbook here and there from the local bookstore for extra practice because Right Start Math doesn't necessarily give you a ton of practice. But some people love that. A lot of people hate extra practice. They think it's terrible. So maybe, maybe that would work for you and you wouldn't need the extra workbooks. Um, Singapore Math is another top-notch program. It's really good. Um, I think it only goes through middle school. I know Right Start Math only goes through middle school math. But it is solid. In my opinion, that's probably all the math you need. I, I know that sounds crazy, but they, they teach definitely basic algebra and, and you definitely know how to figure out area of all different shapes with Right Start Math, perimeter, all of that. Um, you have a really solid understanding of angles and it's pretty good. After that, if you did a year of algebra, eh, you probably, anyway, I'm getting in the weeds. So <laughs> Right Start Math, Singapore Math, um, and then if your kid is older, just a solid, normal math curriculum would be Saxon math. Again, don't drive yourself nuts picking a million different things. 
if you want to research beyond this video, maybe set a time limit so you don't lose your mind and then just pick within that time limit. If you don't like anything that you found, just pick something I'm suggesting. But Saxon Math is a good traditional math program that is well loved. It's not religious or anything. It's, it's good. And you can just do that. So in my opinion, kids should be able to read what is in the beginning of a math chapter and be able to do the problems. You know. But if that's not your child, and if that makes you uncomfortable, I did find one other thing that looked pretty great. It's called Mr. D Math. Mr. D Math is an online math program where you can actually, you have two options. You can actually take classes. It's sort of a video chat class setup, or you, you can purchase access to videos, which is similar. But I imagine in the classes you could ask more questions and whatnot. So it's pricey though. So it just depends on, on what you want to do. Last but not least is something that I discovered and I've known about for a while, but I haven't really looked at it. So it's called Easy Peasy, all in one homeschool. So E-A-S-Y, P-E-A-S-Y. So it is a Christian homeschooling <laughs> curriculum. It is free. And when I say Christian, I just mean that there is a Bible course outlined in there. So when I say course, I just mean she has a list of day one, day two, day three, day four. This is what we study. This is what we do. She has it for 180 days, which is the typical school year. So before I said um, Bookshark does a 36 week, um, four day a week program. So that'd be 144 day. Anyway, a typical school year is 180 days. So in any case, Easy Peasy does 180 days. And when I say it's Christian, um, it's just because of that course. So everything else isn't Christian. So if you're not Christian, don't dismiss Easy Peasy because it's a Christian course. It's actually amazing and it's free. <laughs> and I think that there is a, there are a couple of ways where she makes money. So you can print out everything on PDF or you can buy her her workbooks. So that's how she makes her money and she also has this funny little thing where you can sign up and pay to have your daily lessons sent to you in a, in a more digestible way um, and it's done in sort of an interesting way. I, I don't think it's necessary. I think you could just go to the website easy peasy com, I think. But if you Google Easy Peasy, you'll find it. Easy Peasy All-in-One Homeschool. Um, it is pretty good. I was looking at everything that they do and I was impressed. And I'm, I'm not impressed that easily. Especially the language arts because I'm not super good at being creative with that. And I think that we are, I'm going to print out the language arts portion of it because I like to piece things together, right? And and go through it with both of my kids but make it more age appropriate but I'm going to take the seventh grade one because they write a book. How cool is that? I really love it. So if you don't want to spend $750 of your own money or your charter school money, maybe consider Easy Peasy. I just want to mention one more free online curriculum called Ambleside Online. Ambleside Online is a Charlotte Mason curriculum which is also Christian. It for me is not a complete curriculum but depending on your personality you might love it it's very naturey and it's very literature based what I like to use it for is a book list it is phenomenal as a book list and it's not like again just because it's Christian it's not every book isn't you know talking about God by any stretch of the imagination it is so so good they have it separated out by grade and they have extensive book lists. The book lists, they're all stories, right? Even the history books are written as stories. It is an amazing resource that I hope you check it out even if you don't use it as a curriculum. It's called Ambleside Online. Honorable mention, if you have a, a young child and you wanna homeschool and you're just going into this this year and you're not sure what to do, basically if your kid is kindergarten, first grade, all you, all you really need to do is teach them to count, write the basic numbers, a little bit of handwriting and how to read. That's basically all you need to do. So you want to go get some Bob books. <laughs> if you have a Costco membership, 
go there. They're not very expensive or a friend with a membership or just order them online. I don't care how you get them, but get Bob books. They're wonderful. You'll have, say, I think the first Bob book works on the short A sound, I think. It's been a long time, but I think so. And so it says, ah, right? So the whole book is the first page probably just says cat, right? And the cat. And it's so simple and so repetitive and they learn, they're learning the sounds and they're also learning things as sight words. It's sort of like a combination approach. It's really good. But I taught my kids with the Ordinary Parents Guide to Teaching Your Child to Read. It's a mouthful. Also another really popular book is Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons. I didn't use it myself, but I have looked through it and it's pretty much like the book that I used. And, and Bob, you could probably almost teach your kids to read with a complete set of Bob books. They're phenomenal. So just go do that if that's where you're at. We're almost done, guys. It's been a long video. A couple of other cool things that I want to mention. When you homeschool, there's a lot of neat things that you can do. So you're going to have more time to do a couple of things to let your kid indulge in something that they're interested in. I don't know if you can see that, but we just bought a keyboard and Oh my goodness, my kids have been on the keyboard constantly. I got an amazing app called Simply Piano. And it's a, it, it is so great. The kids love it. They practice all the time and they're almost getting competitive with it. I don't know how you get competitive with piano, but they're figuring out a way to do that. Um, and then you can, anything that they want to do. But also, let's talk about cooking. A lot of people, when, when they homeschool, they like for their kids to cook, you can learn fractions, and you just learn a skill that, let's face it, not enough people have this skill, and our kids need this skill so that they can grow up and be healthy and not waste a bunch of money on free packaged food or eating out. Um, and there's, the way that I would do it is I would just have my kids search on YouTube, find some recipes that they wanna make, buy the ingredients, come home, and let them make the recipes. Depending on the age, try to let your kid have freedom in the kitchen. Obviously, if they're four, maybe not a super sharp knife in the hand, but within reason, and just know that cleaning up is part of the process. It's part of their learning process, so don't begrudge them a couple of messes. Let them make their messes. So if you don't wanna do that, if you want something more structured, there are a couple of really good approaches. One, you can get a delivery box called Radish Kids. Radish Kids is really fun. You get this apron at the beginning and then you get all these cool little patches. So every time you get a mail-in, you get a new patch. And, and, and it gets sewn on like a Girl Scout thing or a Boy Scout thing. And um, there's all these, these great recipes, easy directions, a nice shopping list they give you. They usually give you a fun utensil or two that you use to make that recipe. And it's a nice mixture of desserts and real food like pastas or whatever. So. That's a very, very fun option. Oh, and they, sometimes they'll even do crafts. So around Thanksgiving, you'll get the Thanksgiving kind of harvest recipes, fall recipes, and then they also had um, crafts for Thanksgiving table decorations. So that was fun. If your kid's older, something like purple carrot is a neat option. Purple carrot is a vegetarian um, delivery box. Purple carrot is a kind that I think would be neat for a homeschooler because it comes with the food that you need for the most part and some of it is pre-prepped, some of it's not. And nice, clear recipe cards. And the cool thing is you get to try food that you wouldn't always want to try, right? So it kind of broadens your horizons a little bit and it just comes to your door. So that's fun and easy. So the last thing that I want to talk about is money. So you guys all know the 22 year old who is calling their mom and asking for some money to pay the cell phone bill. That's sad, that's not what we want when our kids are 22, so we need to actually teach them and they're not really getting this in school, so now that you're homeschooling, you have the opportunity to teach your kids all about money. So, what I would do <laughs> is either make a concerted effort to teach it just on your own, or you can get a program. So one neat thing I wanna share with you is a free cartoon, and it's on YouTube. It's called Cashville Kids. There's probably 20 or 25 episodes. Cashville Kids. Check it out, it's very cool. It teaches about money, budgeting, and more advanced stuff than that too. It's, it's pretty neat. Uh, and then 
Another thing that I want to discuss is Dave Ramsey's program. He has a program for middle schoolers and high schoolers. He is very conservative. If you're a liberal, just, just hear me out for a second. Um, it just teaches basic money management skills, right? About saving, about how if you put a certain amount of money away every day, you'll be a millionaire by whatever age. Things like that. It's nothing too controversial. I think the most controversial thing is that he doesn't believe in credit. But I think it would be worthwhile to hear what he has to say about that and then have a discussion with your kid. Personally, I don't know how you would get a loan for a house without good credit, but um, I'm still interested in the program. And I think just the, the basic things that it, it teaches would be reason enough to get the program. So they have a middle school and a high school program. And then there is another, I believe it's just a book or it might be a very small program called Teen Entrepreneur Toolbox. I can never say that, entrepreneur. Anyway, <laughs> Teen Entrepreneur Toolbox. I believe it's just a book. Um, and it'll look pretty good and people like it. Again, it's gonna help your kid develop a basic business plan uh, and, and get a little business going. Now, the last thing I want to talk about for real this time is classes. So there are a lot of neat free classes that you can get online. So one is called OutSchool. Um, there's some free classes and then there's paid classes and they're very fun and creative and add spice to life. Then of course there is Khan Academy. If you don't know about Khan Academy, you need to go. It's K-H-A-N Academy. Go there, it's free, it's amazing. There's, there are math classes and biology classes and chemistry classes and they explain everything amazingly well. And did I say it's free? Something similar to Khan Academy is called openculture.com. Um, again, it's all free, but it's, it's more of a course. So in Khan Academy, it's kind of like individual videos. They do arrange it like courses. So I guess it's sort of similar, but check them both out. There's a lot of neat stuff out there for free. You would be absolutely shocked at what's available. Did you know that Harvard has courses too? Free courses, if you go to Harvard, just Google free Harvard courses, you're gonna be amazed. The last one I want to mention is called Coursera, so C-O-U-R-S-E-R-A. And again, it's one of these things that has a lot of free options. I think this one might have some paid options. So you should check all of those out. I'm actually gonna put links to anything and everything that I mentioned. If I have a link for it, I'm gonna put a link in the description for you just to make it easy. For people who are local to Santa Clarita, um, if you use a charter school, or if you don't, there are some really cool classes at a place called Huckleberry Learning Center, Huckleberry, and Learn Beyond the Book. So it kind of sounds like moving beyond the page, doesn't it? But Learn Beyond the Book, is it's a learning center with classes geared towards homeschoolers there during the day, I think usually. Um, and they have very different classes, and, and they're good. They're kind of pricey though. You could, um, you could use your charter funds to pay for them, or you can pay for them out of pocket. Either way works for you. So that was a lot of information today. I hope it was really helpful to you guys. I'm trying to help you guys have a great start to your homeschooling journey. I know it's overwhelming at times and there's a lot of decisions to make and options to consider. So I, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below or please go over to my Facebook page, even better, to continue the conversation. It's called Homeschool Voices. You can ask more questions there either place. If, you, if there are other videos that you want me to make or questions that you have, just let me know. I will do my best to get to everything. Um, if you like this video, please click thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, please click the subscribe button and the notification bell next to it. In the meantime, happy homeschooling and have a great day.